Order. Call the honourable member Karangamite. Thank you very much, Mr. Deputy Speaker. Tonight it's my great pleasure to rise and speak about our Australia China Free Trade Agreement. Mr. Deputy Speaker, this is an incredibly important agreement for not just Karangamite, a, a great daring agricultural region, but of course for our nation. Under the, the, uh, the China Australia Free Trade Agreement, more than 95 per cent of our exports to China, wine tariffs of up to 30 per cent, beef tariffs up to 25 per cent, seafood to 15 per cent, dairy tariffs of 20 per cent, our lamb, our cheese, our services, as well as our resources, will be entirely duty-free. This is a once-in-a-generation game-changer of a trade agreement which will open up thousands of jobs. And the modelling, the independent modelling, Mr Deputy Speaker, has shown that over the next 20 years some 178,000 new jobs will be created. Mr Deputy Speaker, it, it gives me no joy to raise the most, perhaps most um, reckless campaign that we've seen in the life of this government from those opposite. It is a deceptive and dishonest campaign against this agreement that Labor members know deep in their hearts is going to deliver great opportunity, particularly for our exporters, particularly for our farmers and for our small businesses. And, Mr Deputy Speaker, I call on Bill Shorten, on members opposite, even the Labor Karangamite in Karangamite, who is working hand in glove with the CFMEU, the most discredited union in our country, to end the damaging campaign against this agreement. With more and more Labor leaders coming out to support this once-in-a-generation trade deal, uh, members opposite need to get a grip. They need to start telling the truth. They need to start telling the truth about this agreement because, uh, and we hear from the, one of the members opposite who's, um, who, and I don't even want to acknowledge who he is actually because he spends far too much time outside the chamber than inside with all of his interjections. But Mr Deputy Speaker, uh, we have a situation again today where Bill Shorten has been caught out peddling CFMEU lies about the investment facilitation arrangement linked to our landmark free trade agreement. Mr Shorten said on ABC's AM program, currently it's proposed that for projects of over 150 million, it's not mandatory that the jobs market in Australia has to be tested so that Australians get first crack. This is completely and utterly false and Mr Shorten knows it. During yesterday's Joint Standing Committee on Treaties, on the hearing on the China-Australia Free Trade Agreement, it was again made crystal clear that under the IFA, Australian workers must have been provided with first opportunity for jobs through labour market testing. Proponents, and I make this very clear, Mr Deputy Speaker, proponents must provide evidence of their domestic recruitment efforts for each requested occupation, including advertising, advertising undertaken within the past six months. Senior Immigration Officer David Wilden told the Committee on Treaties that under an IFA, proponents must absolutely, mandatorily, have to test the labour market. These requirements are outlined in black and white in the guidelines under which the IFA will be implemented. The IFA was modelled on Labor's Enterprise Migration Agreement, except the IFA has far more stringent safeguards to ensure Australians have the first opportunity at jobs available under projects covered. Under the IMA, the only thing required was labour market analysis, whereas under the IFA, both labour market analysis and then labour market testing are required before any workers are permitted to enter Australia. So, Mr Deputy Speaker, instead of continuing to peddle CFMEU, CFMEU lies, uh, the Leader of the Opposition and every member opposite and Labor candidates, including in Karangamite, need to start telling the truth. They need to stand up for jobs. 
They need to stand up for this game-changing trade agreement that will fundamentally transform our economy. Order. Call the